What's going on, everybody? This is David, and today we're going to be talking about the 7900 XTX. The reason I want to talk about this card is because I was pretty hyped about this card. In fact, I was so hyped that uh, when it got announced, I actually sold my EVGA 3090 on the spot. Like that day, I put it up for sale and I sold it like within a week for $800 just because. I was going to get the 7900 XTX. So the reason I sold my 3090, that, you know, that kind of seems stupid, right? 3090 used to be super expensive. Well, I actually got a used 3090 system with a 5600X and the 3090 already included in the system for like $1,400. Originally, I got a used from some guy on Facebook. Um, so I didn't buy the card individually. So that's why I sold it off for $800. I didn't pay like, you know, thirteen four fourteen hundred dollars for the card or anything like that um if i had bought a brand new or something like that i, I would just have a 3090 right now so anyways a little backstory i sold the 3090 for the 7900 xtx because i saw their presentation and it looked like an amazingly impressive card from the presentation it looked like it was gonna absolutely spank the 4080 in rasterization get super close to the 4090 and in ray tracing it was going to be from all the speculations it was going to be as good or better than the 3090 ti obviously as we saw from the benchmarks and all that it didn't exactly slap or spank the 4080 it comes close to the 4080 sometimes beats it sometimes doesn't beat it it's basically even with the 4080 being a little bit better in rasterization. And obviously there are the, the new benchmarks with the 7900 XTX uh, getting OC'd, but what they're not showing is the 4080 getting OC'd because when I OC'd my 4080 to three gigahertz, I actually got a pretty big performance, performance jump. So you can OC both models and get performance uh, gains, right? So anyways, that's beside the point. The first reason I'm not getting the 7900 XTX and the biggest reason is ray tracing performance. It, you know, when I had my 3090, it really wasn't that big of a deal, to be honest. Ray tracing, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? I don't use it. Whatever. But the reason I wasn't really using it is because my 3090 was okay with ray tracing. It just wasn't that great with it. And I think my 3090 actually had a little bit of an issue. Uh, the used one that I got, it was like some kind of miner card. He used it for mining. And I actually was getting uh, usually less frames per second in on average than a lot of benchmarks that I was seeing. So I think something was wrong with my 3090. Anyways, when I turned on ray tracing on it, I just wasn't seeing the kind of FPS that I wanted. So I usually just kept it off. And then and I was playing a lot of multiplayer games back then. So... And the single player game that I was playing was Death Stranding, and that does not have any uh, ray tracing to it at all. So anyways, what I'm trying to say is I did not have much experience with ray tracing back then when I initially sold my 3090 for the 7900 XTX. But since grabbing the 4080, since having my 3090 Ti now, I've actually been playing games with ray tracing and i'm actually a believer it does make a fat difference in the in the visuals it looks amazing especially when you are playing graphically intensive single board games which i actually do like to play single board games i do like to uh, sit back in my couch and play games with my controller and turn all the visuals up all right now the uh multiple games those games i usually turn off ray tracing unless i can get like 100 over 120 fps because that's the um refresh rate of my tv my oled 4k oled tv but if i'm getting under 120 fps i do turn off ray tracing which is always the case usually ray tracing is usually always going to dip your fps lower than 120 fps if you're playing a 4k or even using DLSS quality, unless you got the 4090, obviously. But anyways, you know, in multiplayer games, you're not really noticing those effects anyways. So I would say if you're like a multiplayer gamer only, and you just never play single player games, or you got like a PS5 for single player games, then the 7900 XTX is actually a pretty fad, fad deal. Like it's a good deal for rasterization. Uh, you get very similar to 4080 or a little bit better for nine or you know two hundred dollars less. It's not a bad deal at all. However, 
I think that ray tracing is very important. It looks amazing. I don't want to get the 7900 XTX and then have the new titles come out, max everything out, and then not get really good performance in ray tracing, you know? Yeah, the 7900 XTS gets get great rasterization performance, but as soon as you turn on ray tracing, it dips down below the 4080. So when you get a game, you can't even turn on ray tracing or you're, or you're going to get worse performance than the 4080. So you're always going to be like, man, should I just keep all ray tracing off or should I turn it on? But then I have to use like FSR performance mode. You're always going to have that in the back of your mind. You know, I don't want to make those types of um, sacrifices when I'm getting a card that costs a thousand dollars or more. So that's why I think, in my opinion, even the 4080 being at twelve hundred dollars, which is freaking ridiculous. And I really hope they lower the prices. I think it's actually even a better deal at that point, to be honest, <laughs> than the uh, 7900 XTX because of that ray tracing and because of the other reasons that I will uh, lay out. So the second reason is because NVIDIA is the market leader. So what does that mean? That means they have usually better driver support, like their driver team, for example, versus AMD is like four, 10 times fold bigger than AMD. In fact, I think I heard that NVIDIA's driver team is bigger than all of AMD or something like that. Their driver team is huge, right? They um, just make better drivers in general and they support more games in general. Their cards just work better in games in general. Also, more games are optimized and have more NVIDIA features in them in general. You know, obviously there's games that are a little bit more optimized for AMD, a little bit more optimized for NVIDIA, but in average, on average, NVIDIA is the market leader, so game developers are going to optimize for NVIDIA more so. And that brings about a lot of, you know, uh, uh, good experiences for us gamers. We get the NVIDIA features, we get the NVIDIA optimization, all that. That's just good for us, less stutters, all that, you know what I mean? Also, software. If you're into editing, if you're into 3D modeling, stuff like that, NVIDIA is always the way to go because they're the market leader. Those programs are always going to optimize first for NVIDIA and then second for AMD. So basically getting a 7900 XTX is kind of like settling. You're getting it because it's cheaper and it has less features and it's just not a, as good of a card. Like for example, yeah, the 4080 is expensive, but when I opened the 4080 and held the card in my hands, that thing feels like a piece of solid steel like that is the most high quality graphics card i've ever held in my hands it feels incredible i could literally like throw that thing at a i don't know at a big animal and kill it because it's so such a heavy and big card it's literally a metal brick um now obviously it's oversized but it is overbuilt and it's good i i like things that are overbuilt that's i rather something be overbuilt than underbuilt. You know what I mean? Or built just enough. Uh, so n number, number third reason, and I'm a little mad at AMD about this, is that they touted their whole chipwit design, right? Chipwits, what's the whole point of chipwits? It's uh, because it's going to make manufacturing cheaper, right? They don't use the four nanometer chips like the 4080 does. What do they use? They use a 6 nanometer chip and they use a 5 nanometer chip and they got chiplets all around. So that should bring massive savings to us consumers as well, right? But that's not really what's going on here. They basically released a 7800 XT where, and you know, named it a 7900 XTX at $1,000. So where are those savings that uh, us consumers are going to benefit from with the chipwood design you know what i mean obviously chipwits you know they have a lot of good you know they, they can be scaled very well but at the same time i do think they are uh inferior to a monolithic chip because you do have to have those interconnects whereas a monolithic chip 
chip it's just one chip you know what i mean it's it's a little bit different i think uh it's still a superior technology to chip with chip with chip with in my opinion are just a good way of saving money so uh yeah we yeah the 7900 xtx is a little bit cheaper than the 4080 but at the same time i just don't think it has enough features or enough um going for it to justify its thousand dollar price i really think they uh, should have just priced it at least eight hundred dollars and i would have said that's a good ass deal in my opinion but being thousand dollars already i don't think i would even i wouldn't i don't think i would buy it i'm not gonna buy it I, i'd rather buy a 4080 for that price all right it's just overpriced in my opinion last reason is resale value i feel like nvidia has better resale value than amd does it's kind of like comparing apple to android you know apple phones always have better resale value than uh, android phones and same as like macbooks versus windows laptops i feel like uh, macbooks always have better resale value and it's kind of the same thing with nvidia so yeah you do initially spend a little bit more money with nvidia but you are able to resell it for about the same price all right so that's all i got guys thank you for watching this video what are your thoughts leave them down below in the comments have a good day